Right, so all the debating members, you can have your video switched on for now and keep it on for the rest of the debate. Right, so let's begin. All right, very good evening to all the participants as well as to those who might be watching this debate session. We at Spectra Tech engage high school students in a number of activities with debates being one of them. To all the rising juniors out there who might be watching this, we encourage all of you to be a part of such technological and scientific debate sessions. And feel free to contact any of the members at Spectra Tech to be a part of it. And in order to get to know more about Spectra Tech, you can feel free to visit our Instagram page as well as our official site, that's spectratech.org. So that being said, I would now like to hand over the proceedings to Shivam who shall introduce today's debate motion to all of you along with the rules and an earnest request to all the participants would be to stay muted at all times and to all the debating members would be to please switch on your videos at all times. That being said, Shivam, over to you. Thank you very much, Zoof. First of all, introducing the motion to the house. Today's motion reads that this house believes that Bitcoin and other forms of cryptocurrencies should be banned. A very current and controversial topic according to me. We will be starting with side proposition and I'll be calling on the first speaker, Debar Kodatta. Please note that the timings for you will be four minutes plus 30 seconds and questions will be entertained. Debar Kodatta, you may start. Um, I was just asking whether you could give a, if you could give an alarm if I reach the time. If exactly. you could write anything in the chat. Okay, thank you. So, am I both uh, clearly audible and visible? Yes, yes Devalko, you are. You may proceed. All right. Bitcoin will do to the banks what email did to the postal industry. Rick Falkwitz. Honorable judges, respected chairperson, sir, honorable audience, and of course, my most worthy opponents. A very good evening to one and all present in today's August House. Today, the motion which stands in front of the House states that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies should be banned. And today, I, as a lead speaker of site proposition, would prove to you how valid and true this topic really is. We would prove our stance. And today, I, as the lead speaker, would be speaking about how cryptocurrency could in introduces the process of pump and dump and could help uh, help other scammers to carry out such scams. The second speaker would be speaking about how cryptocurrency takes away the economic control from the government. And the third speaker would be speaking about how cryptocurrency leads to money laundering. And the fourth speaker would come and refute most of side opposition's points. So today, what does cryptocurrency actually mean? In simple words, Cryptocurrency is a digital or a virtual currency that is secured by cryptography. Now, moving on to my very own constructive. Today, ladies and gentlemen understand that there is a very uh, common scheme known as the pump and dump scheme. And that is a sort of a scam which could lead to many people losing a lot of money. Now, what does the uh, thing pump and dump actually mean? Now, let us understand it in a simple world. Now, if a certain person or a group buys a large amount of security or a token that is thinly traded, and by doing so, the price of that token increases. Now, as the price increases, the entity who bought the token will now advertise about it, and more people would jump into buying the token. And the people would keep rising and that would lead to many more people who would get excited about the prospect of further gains. And now the entity that was behind all the buying will now leave or exit the scheme market with an uh, with a, uh, amount of big gain. And that would result to a lot of people who, uh, who have whole shares or tokens to have a huge amount of loss. 
this is something that had happened recently the example of doggy coin which was introduced by elon musk simple statements that he put on social media led to a number of people uh, buying tokens of doggy coin and at the end of the day he had carried out more or less a scam which led to a number of people losing a lot of money we must understand that cryptocurrency does not have a have a stable value the value might change at different points of time and if something like this happen can you imagine the amount of harm that will be caused so many people are losing money and by money i mean a huge amount of money furthermore cryptocurrency poses a threat to tax evasion and also it allows people to invest in black market we must understand that cryptocurrency has lack of reporting requirements according to tax experts themselves and since this cryptocurrency is not reported if a person makes a huge transaction he does not have to pay a tax necessarily and that would just mean that there won't be there will be people who are not going to pay the taxes which is not going to help the government in any way shape or form john feldhammer a former irs senior legitimate said that any time you create a path of non reporting you create a way to benefit from tax fraud and it is an in an untraceable way and this would lead to many people who are not going to pay the taxes let me give you an example suppose a person is actually gambling now if he wins a certain amount of money in an ideal world he has to pass a transaction and the uh, he has to pass a transaction to the government and the government will know about the transaction but the very moment we are we are investing in cryptocurrency you don't have to necessarily pass that transaction and the government is not going to know about it and like that you can actually skip paying taxes similarly you can also invest in invest black money in cryptocurrency like this because the government will not get to know in any way shape or form and in this way a number of frauds will keep on happening my second speaker would come up and would elaborate on my point further here i hope that i was able to explain the how that how cryptocurrency poses a lot of harm and how and why it should be banned here i'll like to rest my case but not my stance and yes i'm very proud to propose thank you thank you devad ko please note this that the speaker overshot by 40 seconds now seeing that the first speaker has spoken the house will be open to questions people wishing to ask can raise their hands via zoom first question recognized shreya shree shreya shree you may proceed yes um so uh, the speaker mentioned that cryptocurrency transactions aren't reported but uh, do, do you understand that each and every transaction present in bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency is secured using blockchain and it is stored in a ledger which is uh, which it, it can be accessed by miners so how do you justify your stance based on this so thank you for your question sir so today we are not only talking about one or two cryptocurrency we are talking about cryptocurrency as a whole and as a whole cryptocurrency is not secured as the irs senior said that if any time you create a path of non reporting now he can't be wrong because he is a part of irs he was a head of irs so how can he be wrong if one cryptocurrency or two cryptocurrency is secure that doesn't matter because as a whole cryptocurrency is unsecure because it is not traced and a number of frauds can happen easily without people getting to know about it i hope i have answered your question thank you very much devad ko considering the overshooting of time we will not be taking any more questions the second speaker for today will be the lead speaker from side opposition vishi banerji ghosh the timings remain the same 4 minutes plus 30 seconds questions will be entertained vishi you may proceed a very good afternoon to one all present here 
Now, the motion on the fire today states that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies should be banned. And I, as a least speaker of side opposition, will prove to you exactly why this motion is completely invalid. Now, there's one keyword in today's motion, but since our proposition has defined it to our satisfaction, I will not be repeating the definition. Instead, let me focus more on the context of today's motion. Understand that today we are not debating some hypothetical scenario where there's the possibility of cryptocurrencies being banned. No, today we are debating a real world scenario where the Indian government has in, is indeed looking to pass a bill that bans Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in the country. Thereby, side opposition carries two burdens of proof today. Firstly, we have to prove that this bill is not a good idea. And secondly, why cryptocurrency is lies above fiat currency. And in order to do so, we have dividing, we have divided our team's argument into the following. Firstly, I will be speaking on why cryptocurrency shouldn't be banned with respect to the bill and the external factors involved. Secondly, my second speaker will go into depth on how cryptocurrency is a more secure form of currency. And my third speaker will speak on the de decentralization aspects of cryptocurrency. And lastly, my fourth speaker will refute each and every argument brought up by said proposition today. With that, let me start off with my own point. Firstly, let us understand this bill. It is not, it not only bans digital currency, but fines anyone that trades in the country or is holding such digital assets. It criminalizes possession, issuance, mining, trading, transferring crypto assets, and impacts Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Therefore, it is a complete ban on existing cryptocurrencies and only a state-owned national digital currency would be valid. Now, in order to prove why this bill shouldn't be passed, I will bring up three points. Firstly, on the counterproductive alternative that the bill suggests. Secondly, on how asset holders will have to sell off or liquidate their assets. And lastly, on an expert's alternative. Starting off with the first point. Cryptocurrency has been under fire for a while now promoting illegal and this bill for, for, for promoting illegal activity, like side proposition said. And this bill is often justified by saying that it will shut down such activities and bring an end to it. However, understand that this bill also gives a digital currency. Even though the government fears illegal activity, the national digital currency will all will not be immune to it. Activities like money laundering and terror financing will freely continue under it. And hence, the bill takes no measures to prevent this and has virtually no effect on these activities. On the other hand, a ban on cryptocurrency can very well lead to a whole underground market where, genu where even genuine investors will be forced to operate. Many experts uh, speculate that a ban will lead to the formation of a parallel economy, which will further promote illegitimate, illegitimate use of cryptocurrency. Hence, ladies and gentlemen, you can understand that this is all very counterproductive. Efforts to wipe out illegal use does nothing to reduce it and instead promotes further illegal use and thus has no productive result. Now on to the second part of my point. The bill provides asset holders a six-month window to sell or liquidate their assets. Now, many argue that this is a very short period of time, but the bigger point lies elsewhere. Understand that in order to sell off the crypto assets, the use of black market will be imminent, and this bill, therefore, the bill further promotes the use of black market again. Understand that as is the case with any kinds of prohibition, the market doesn't really disappear; it simply moves to darker places where the where threats of uh, money laundering and terror financing further increase. Therefore, if this ban is enforced, it will further for, it will force people to either liquidate their assets or take part in the shadow economy and therefore, again, proves that the ban shouldn't happen. Moving on with my last point. To understand that the situation that we're all in with cryptocurrency right now is similar to one that RBI faced regarding microfinance institutions a few years back and, and they considered banning it then. Now, uh, Najiket Mona, who's a former banker with ICICI Bank, who works a lot towards financial inclusion, said that if you don't like a microfinance institution, you create for more, implying that a market will discipline the one that is wayward. Such a principle is apt for cryptocurrency as well. If there are concerns about them, the answer is to have several more of them so that they get so that the oh, one that's wayward gets disciplined and not a government-owned monopoly. Thus, I feel I've been able to effectively prove to you why this bill is ineffective, self-contradictory, and further promotes what it aims to stop, while there is an alternative and thus why cryptocurrencies should be banned. I yield my time. Thank you, Rishi. You were just about time. So now anyone, we are willing to entertain one question. Like Niklesh. Yes, sir. Go. So I have a question. So you talked about how banning, uh, how banning cryptocurrencies will lead to a separate black market. But considering in the current cryptocurrency market, there is no proper regulation and all the things you just mentioned are happening. How do you say that a black market, which is essentially what the crypto market, the cryptocurrency market is, will be any different from what it is now? Okay. Thank you for your question. So um, my answer is actually in my speech itself. First, I said, I talked about the government bill, right, which introduces a state-owned national uh, digital currency. Therefore, the, therefore, what you're proposing doesn't really stop that black market that already exists. However, instead, creating a ban forces genuine investors to go into the black market as well. 
and thus it creates a it does it just increases the size. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rishi. Now we'll be calling on the second speaker from side proposition, Pranay Sadani. And please note that there is a slight change in the timings. You will have three minutes plus 30 seconds for your speech. You may proceed and questions may, will be entered. I am side opposition. Yes. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. The next speaker will be the second speaker from side proposition, which will be Vignesh Malik. Same rules apply. Good afternoon, respected judges, moderators, sir, my worthy opponents, and the audience. Today's motion states before us that crypt, uh, the bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies should be banned. I, the second speaker of Tim proposition, will prove to you how true this topic indeed is. Now, my first speaker has already mentioned the volatile aspect to obtain continuity. Now, understand that cryptocurrency is run by a decentralized system and not by a centralized authority. The government has no power or any way to keep a track of the transaction that are, that are occurring in the process. It's a huge problem for the government as they don't, as they're, as they're losing the hand on the economy and so they can't control the economy. Thus, uh, thus they have to, uh, thus now the option is to keep the economy in the hand of some uh, decentralized authority who in the hands of some decentralized authority so practically this will destroy the economy of the country but understand that the government controls fiat currencies which are which are uh, which are under the central bank to issue and destroy them they can also keep a track of the money they can know where the money is going they can know uh, they can know who profits from the money and other illegal activities that are being done with the money so all of this control is completely lost when a decentralized body creates their own type of currencies. So if you do not get to keep a track of this economy, of this thing, the economy and discipline of the country will be in ruins. Bitcoin users doesn't really need the present banking system. The currency is created in some cyberspace, so-called the miners, use the power of computer to solve algorithms that serve as verification for Bitcoin traders. This reward is a payment of cryptocurrency which is stored digitally and between the buyer and the seller without need of any intermediary without need of any intermediary so if bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency becomes adopted the entire banking system would be irrelevant without banks who will call you when your money gets hacked or who will assist you when a transfer of asset fell or any technical glitch occurs now another important factor is that without banks the jobs disappear the people who work in banks or any other sectors of the bank they lose their jobs and they and the and it will result in a joblessness in the country thus having a huge impact on its economy and resulting in the loss of labors and the tax revenues those banks and the employees pay to generate will not be done so i would like to say that i have been able to prove how how why how and why cryptocurrencies and bitcoin should be banned yeah, I would like to end my case, but not my stance. Thank you. Thank you, Vignesh. You Thank just... you, Vignesh. Please note that the speaker undershot by seven seconds. With that, we will be asking for questions from the house. First question recognized will be Pranay Sadani. Pranay, you may proceed. Thank you for your speech, sir. So you mentioned that it makes it difficult for the government to take, to keep a record uh, of the financial history. So, but don't you realize that the public ledger of the transaction history is controlled by an administrator? Then how can you say it is difficult for the government to control it? So what is your say on this? So see, you're saying, uh, so the, uh, you're saying that the public was uh, investing on it as a record but how are you sure that that person is providing the record to the government the government themselves are not getting the data and the and the person who is collecting the data the data stays with himself and so uh, the data is not con not conveyed to the government i think i've answered your question thank you very much 
seeing that we have some time left due to the undershooting, we will be recognizing another question. Second question recognized is from Anay Garodia. You may proceed. Respected sir, you told in your speech that uh, uh, cryptocurrency will lead to huge job losses in the banking sector. But don't you realize that uh, whenever there is a new technology, we have to abandon the old technology and move on, move on uh, to the new innovation. So how do you justify that? Uh, should we only live in a world where there is complete uh, employment and no innovation? Yeah, so uh, you're saying that uh, you're going to invent new technologies like cryptocurrency. So why don't you invent something like good, something which is not related to cryptocurrency, where there will be people who will be, where there will be a number of jobs where people can work themselves. And thus, on both hands, the people will get more jobs and the economy and the currency and the banking system will be good in the country. I think I've answered your question. Thank you. Thank you, Vignesh. We shall now call forward second member from side opposition, that is Pranay Sadani. Pranay, you can come up with your arguments. Am I visible and audible? Yes, you are. A very good afternoon to everyone present here. I am Pranay Sadani and today the motion placed before us reads that Bitcoin and other form of cryptocurrency should be banned. And I, being a member of side opposition, would prove to you how baseless and invalid this topic stands. So I, I would like to move on to my first constructive, which is that cryptocurrencies, that is security, while dealing with cryptocurrencies is not compromised. Now, cryptocurrency is a digital payment system that doesn't rely on banks to verify transactions. As it said, it's a peer-to-peer -peer system that can enable anyone, anywhere to send and receive payments instead of being physical money that is carried around and exchanged in the real world. Cryptocurrency payment exists purely as digital entries to an online database that can describe specific transactions. When you transfer cryptocurrency funds, the transactions are recorded in a public ledger and you store your cryptocurrency in a digital wallet. So cryptocurrency got its name because it uses encryption to verify transactions. This means advanced coding is involved in storing and transmitting cryptocurrency data between wallets and to the public ledgers. The aim of the encryption is to provide security and safety. Well, now we arise to a question. How secure is cryptocurrency? Now, cryptocurrency are usually built using blockchain technology. Now, blockchain describes the way transactions are recorded into blocks and timestamp. It's a fairly complex technical process and I do not want to dive deep into that, but I would like to state the result of it. The result is a digital ledger of cryptocurrency transactions that's hard for the hackers to tamper with. In addition, transactions require a two-factor authentication process. Friends, don't you realize that how secure cryptocurrency transactions are? Understanding it allows two-factor authentication process. For instance, you might be asked to enter a username and password to start a transaction. Then you might even have to enter an authentication codes that's sent via text to your personal cell phone. And hence, we can understand how secure this is. Now, I would like to go on stating that Bitcoin or any other form of cryptocurrency is digital and as my second speaker, um, uh, my third speaker will state, it's decentralized. Uh, with Bitcoin and any other form of cryptocurrency, people get the liberty to uh, exchange value without intermediaries which translate to greater control of funds and lower fees. It's faster, cheaper, more secure and immutable. immutable. Here, I would like to conclude that I've been able to derive a conclusion in your mind that cryptocurrency should not be bind as uh, there is no compromisation in the privacy of a user. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pranay. Please note that there was 10 seconds of undershoot in the speech. So we will now be asking for questions on that speech. And the first question recognized is from Debatko Datta. Debatko, you may proceed. So thank you for your speech, sir. So in your speech, you explained how secure cryptocurrency actually is. And you told that how it is something between two people. But sir, do you realize that cryptocurrency is not stable? And for example, there are companies like Gox, which fell. And a number of people lost millions of dollars. So, but that is not something which is going to happen in the 
a normal form of transaction so so what do you have to say about this okay thank you for your question sir and i would like to list four tips for people to invest in cryptocurrency safely firstly they must research exchanges they must know how to uh, store their digital currency they must know how to diversify their investments and then prepare for volatility because it's the person uh, who has to believe that he is taking uh, he is investing in cryptocurrency and hence he must study about it and and then invest and hence over your security is not getting compromised since is that person's will for uh, buying that or investing in that particular cryptocurrency for example uh bitcoin bitcoin cash litecoin dogecoin etc i hope i have been able to answer your question thank you sir thank you very much pranay we will not be accepting any more questions now i like to call upon the third speaker from side proposition adhira jagadwal who will follow the time limit of 3 plus 30 and questions will be entertained adhira you may proceed Bitcoin hasn't produced anything. It doesn't do anything. It just sits there. It's like a seashell or something, and that is not an investment to me. This quote by Warren Buffett basically summarizes the concept of Bitcoin. My second speaker talked about cryptocurrencies bypassing government norms. Now I will be elaborating on money laundering due to cryptocurrency. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adhira Jagarwala, and today I am the third speaker of Side Proposition. and the topic and i will be uh, proving to you beyond a doubt how valid the motion before us is when there is a transfer of money from one legal jurisdiction to another that too without having the regulatory mechanism then such transfers falls into a gray area of money laundering tracking the origin of cryptocurrencies is possible because of blockchain technology however obfuscating the path of origin makes it impossible to trace but not impossible Nevertheless, it is time-consuming, and criminals make use of this vulnerability to launder money using cryptocurrency. Criminals use these crypto crypto money laundering to hide the illicit origin of funds using a variety of methods. The most simplified form of Bitcoin money laundering leans hard on the fact that transactions made in cryptocurrencies are pseudo pseudonymous. Unregulated exchanges enable repeated exchanges that will gradually obscure the laundered money's origin. after which criminals or illegal businesses can withdraw it as legally acquired cryptocurrency moreover india does not have the required infrastructure for supporting these exchanges the people too do not have that much experience to deal with these digital currencies i would now like to move on to my second point cryptocurrencies work on blockchain technologies on network which basically encodes the complete transaction history of every cryptocurrency while this makes them highly tamper proof cryptocurrencies are decentralized meaning they do not have a central authority this makes them impervious to government regulations and jurisdiction limitations this means that the government has very limited power in case something goes wrong with the transactions another issue is with blockchains is it is still years away from gaining real revenues these three years ago when blockchain companies and cryptocurrency stocks were the hottest thing it was expected that blockchain technology would be quickly adopted let us let investors foresee the cash when it too that would arise specifically no business are willing to make the costly and time consuming switch to blockchain without the technology being broadly tested yet companies aren't willing to make this initial leap to test the technology and prove its scalability moreover the loss of a digital wallet could result in a loss in the could result in the loss of vital currency which which considering cryptocurrency is digital this could have a very bad impact on which could have a very bad impact now i would like to say that for for instance if you buy a public traded company you can scour income statements its balance sheet read about industry wide catalysts and listen to management commentary from recent conference calls and presentations in other words you can make an informed decision with bitcoin there is no tangible data for investments investors to wrap their hands around this transaction settlements times and total circulating token supply but neither of these figures tell us anything about the value or utility of bitcoin now i'd like to rest my case but not my stocks thank you adhiraj you were just around time we shall be entertaining questions for your speech so first i would call forward rishi to come up with his question 
Thank you, your speech. Considering the real world scenario where the government has proposed a national digital currency, how do you propose that that will help to stop money laundering and other illegal activities with cryptocurrency? I'm sorry, sir, but could you repeat your question? Your voice is a little sure. low. Okay. Um, considering the real world scenario where the government is proposing, the like, government along with banning cryptocurrencies, proposing their own national digital currency, how do you propose that that will help to stop uh, money laundering and other illegal activities regarding cryptocurrencies? So money laundering is a practice, is, is a thing that is already there in the world and will continue to remain no matter how secure everything is. So, but with the advent of cryptocurrencies, so you must realize that it opens the opens criminal, it opens a way, it finds a way out for criminals to engage and become and and have a better form of communicating and have a better form of currency that is easier for them to handle in because of the anonymity. And it will become easier for them to trade in black markets and money launder. I hope I'm thank you very much. We will be accepting one more question from Pranay Sadhan. Pranay, you may proceed. Okay, thank you for your speech, sir. Like, I had a similar question to what Rishi asked, but I still would like to ask a, a more emphasized question. So, uh, you mentioned in your speech that uh, money laundering will occur if we open ways for. Um, cryptocurrency but sir don't you realize uh, that if we uh, legalize people legalize uh, cryptocurrency people will be able to do transaction without using any illegal method so so please justify the fact that how uh, banning cryptocurrencies it will uh, reduce money laundering and not increase it so what's your say on this so i am um, i mentioned in my speech that implementing cryptocurrencies will increase money laundering. So I didn't mention that keeping this original country uh, currency will reduce cryptocurrency, will reduce money laundering. All right, rightly said Adiraj. We shall now call, call forward third member from side opposition, that is Anaya Garodia. Good evening to each and everyone present here. Today, the proposition before us lies that cryptocurrency should be banned, and I am here to prove how baseless this proposition is. Now, I am here. Uh, I'm, I'll discuss the main uh, concept of cryptocurrency and its main feature, de uh, decentralization, and why it is so important and beneficial. According to the Oxford Dictionary, uh, the cryptocurrency is defined as the transfer of control of an activity or organization to several local offices or authorities rather than a single one. Think about an, any normal currency like the Indian rupee. It is its value in supply is controlled by the central bank or the Reserve Bank of India, and its and its uh, exchange is controlled by many subsidiary banks. No, the problem with this lies. Uh, the problem with it, this is made clear with the financial crisis of 2008, uh, 2008 and the Great Depression of 1921, and the mismanagement by many several banks. By several banks, resulted in a, an economic collapse, which uh, uh, which destroyed many multinational corporations and the GDP of many GDPs of many countries, such as Greece. Hmm. Cryptocurrency prevents this uh, with decentralization in which no central source will be able to regulate or control how, uh, how much supply of the currency is there. Uh, it was amidst the financial crisis that Satoshi Nakamoto, a Japanese entrepreneur, invented the first cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. It is not issued by any central source and it is instead controlled and it is supplies instead controlled by many people called miners. These miners uh, validate transactions happening between people and thus and, and do it by uh, performing several million calculations to, uh, to surpass the blockchain technology. They are they are rewarded with uh, crypto uh, with bitcoins in return. It is true that they do not have, uh, uh, as proposed by the lead speaker of the pro proposition, it is true that cryptocurrencies do not have any inherent value, but no currency does. Uh, think about any paper currency. They do not have any inherent value, but are just pieces of paper with images and numbers. Uh, the reason for that uh, perceived value is because we all think of them as valuable, and therefore it gives them value. 
it, is, it was also proposed by the second speaker of the proposition that uh, cryptocurrency is very volatile and thus should be banned. Cryptocurrency and the reason for the uh, cryptocurrency's volatility is its uh, is its decentralization uh, aspect as it uh, as it be, be fundamentally uh, fundamentally uh, as its fundamental uh, notion is that no central force will control its value and therefore uh, it is highly volatile and depends on the market's views and opinions on it and will and it will only stabilize if the market's uh, market's view on it will st uh, on it stabilizes and thus when we invest in cryptocurrency we have to be aware of how many how much money we are can afford to lose and therefore i would like to end my speech by saying that uh, when we are that despite having so, certain flaws cryptocurrency is the only way we can pre prevent certain um, certain economic collapses happening due to the mismanagement mismanagement by several banks Thank you very much, Anna. Now we will be asking for questions to the house. First one recognized is from Nikhilesh Mukherjee. Nikhilesh, you may proceed. Thank you, sir, for your speech. So you talked about how in cases of emergency, like the COVID-19 situation, some central banks have managed the financial situation well and some have, haven't and used that as a point to say central banks are bad. But, sir, understand that in an economy driven by Bitcoin, sir, if such an emergency happened, there would be absolutely no scope for regulation. There would be absolutely no sco scope for control. So how can you say such a situation is in any way better off than the current situation? You know, uh, in my uh, speech, I meant uh, I did not um, uh, I did not intend to say that uh, uh, there will be an econ economy only driven by Bitcoin, but there will be a parallel economy to the current situation where there will be a uh, well, there will be a centralized uh, economy and a decentralized economy. So that in case if uh, if the central uh, if the centralized economy collapses due to mismanagement, the decentralized economy can take over. I hope I uh, answer your question. Thank you, Anna. We shall entertain one more question. So, Vignesh, go forward with your question. Yeah. So, sir, you have said that the money has some fixed picture which does not have any value. So, I would like to say that the money has a, a more or less a less picture, but the more or less a fixed uh, value. But the bitcoins, uh, the values of bitcoin can change a lot, which will result to huge losses. So, what is your say on this? I mentioned in my speech that this is because of the decentralization aspect of the Bitcoin, which basically means that no central uh, source can regulate the value of Bitcoin. And when we invest in Bitcoin, we have, uh, we can only invest, we should only invest the money we can afford to lose. Otherwise, it's just plain foolishness. Thank you very much, Anand. Now we will be moving forward to the fourth speaker from side proposition, which is Nikhilesh Mukherjee. Nikhilesh, you may proceed and questions will be entertained on this. Okay, so thank you. Respected chairpersons or members of the house. Today, let us understand that what prop side proposition is saying in this debate is not simply that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are bad. We are saying Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are so inherently detrimental to society that they must be immediately banned by governments. Now, today we are engaging in a debate today. Today, there is a chairperson presiding over this debate. There are certain rules and restrictions in this debate, such as the time restrictions, such as the restriction of politeness. And it is within these restrictions, within this regulation that we are engaging in productive and meaningful debate. Now, some of us may say, let us do away with all these restrictions because then we'll get more time to speak. Then it will be more, then we will have more transparency and they will give all this justification. But what that will, in, but what that will automatically do is spoil spoil the entire quality of debate. Similarly, Bitcoin will spoil the entire quality of our society. Now, coming to the points of side opposition in today's debate. Today, the main point of the lead speaker of side opposition today was about how a banning uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies would be counterproductive because it creates a black market. Now, that statement was very eye-opening for me because it forced me to reflect on what really is the difference between the current cryptocurrency market and the black market. Now, both of these have no proper regulatory bodies. Both of them cannot be overseen in any satisfactory manner by any government. In fact, in, in case a black market is created, which has the same, which has the same force as a current uh, legal cryptocurrency market, the only difference will be that one is legal and one is illegal. But 
con consider the very underlying principle about how we should not ban something because a black market would be created in its place. According to this, we should not ban anything dangerous. We should not ban guns which are issued without any license. We should not ban drugs. Simply because the black market is created in its place does not mean we should not ban something. A, because a black market is created in its place, the fact that a particular activity, a particular transaction is going to be completely illegal and you may face severe punishment for it is a major demotivator for many people to actually engage in that kind of a transaction. When questioned about this, the lead speaker talked about how more genuine investors will start investing in a black market. But we have heard what actual investors have to say about cryptocurrency. One of the top investors in the world and one of the most successful investors, Warren Buffet, like my third speaker talked about, has clearly stated how cryptocurrency really does not have any scope for investment because one of the main reasons for that being its extreme volatility. The second speaker in his question talked about how it being a public record will inherently mean that it is a government controlled record. So understand that just because it is public justice can be viewed by all does not mean that the government will be given any power to actually regulate that market, will not be given any power to actually see oversee that market. So the, only, the public record, the only thing a public record is going to achieve is a complete loss of privacy, not any form of government regulation. He also talked about security and safety, but we have to understand what is the point of security and safety. Uh, technologies like Bitcoin may be secured by a blockchain, but, but such securities only make it much easier for criminal activities to go unchecked, much easier for people who are engaging in things like terror financing, like the lead speaker talked about, those transactions becoming more and more secure. Coming to the third speaker's question, where he described a technology like cryptocurrency as innovation. Now, today you may call it innovation, but today I call it a disaster on society. The very fact, the inherent contradictions and confusion inside opposition's argument today can be clearly reflected in the fact that the third speaker used the definition of decentralization to define cryptocurrency. He, he also talked about financial control by central banks. Now, today we are not saying that the current financial system is absolutely perfect. We are not saying that it does not, it does not make mistakes at some points. It does. But a Bitcoin market would be completely in unregulated. There would be no scope to actually hold accountability for making those mistakes. There'll be no scope for correction, which is why today we are saying that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies must be banned. Finally, the lead speaker's uh, statement that he has two burdens today is much like a pump and dump scheme. He said that there'll be two burdens and he forced you to invest in the arguments of the team. But when you finally did so, it was a complete scam because they have not been able to prove either one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nikhilesh. Please notice that you were overshot by one full minute. We will now be accepting questions. First question from Anay Garodia. You may proceed. Uh, respected sir, you correlated the uh, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market with the black market, when in fact in the cryptocurrency market can, uh, each transaction made in the cryptocurrency market can easily, can easily be located using the public ledger that is present. So how do you justify the, the, the correlation? Well, Thank you, because sir. Uh, excuse me, because in uh, because in the black market you cannot trace any uh, any transaction. So first of all, understand that this public. First of all, understand that every single black market will have its own different characteristics. But the major defining aspect of a black market is that it does not happen through legitimate channels, which are overseen by government. It does not happen with any form of any or any form of effective supervision, any form of effective control by government agencies. You know exactly what is going on and 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 what the transactions are not hidden by a mist of 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 blockchain and are not hidden by a mist of pseudonyms. That was my basic point about how the current cryptocurrency market has a lot of similarities with the black market. All right, nicely Thank answered. you very much. Nicely answered. Uh, now we move we to the now... last speaker of today. Okay, Shivam, you can go forward. Sure, thank you. Now we move to the last speaker of today, which is the fourth speaker from side opposition. Shreya Shre, the timing is the same. Three minutes, 30 seconds. You may proceed. Good evening to one and all present here. The motion placed before us today reads, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies should be banned. And today, I being the fourth speaker side opposition will prove to you how invalid this motion is. 
Now today, side proposition came out, came up, and speak about spoke about various things such as tax evasion, volatility, banks. Now I will look at each and every point that they brought up. Now, firstly, they go about evasion and how cryptocurrency can lead black market and tax evasion. It's important to note that everything is stored on a public ledger that is sent, and it is all stored by cryptography and blockchain, making it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend cryptocurrency due to the presence of blockchain technology and cryptography that is used on cryptocurrency. Secondly, they spoke about volatility. Volatility is an aspect that is present on in each and every investment we make in our lives. Like each and every investment made, uh, the uh, cryptocurrencies also go up and down in their values. But that is the inherent nature of investing. Secondly, they spoke, uh, spoke about how cryptocurrencies are inherently decentralized and banks have no authority over them. Now, crypto decentralization is, as side opposition sees it, a, a benefit of cryptocurrency. As a banking system can often be not seen unnecessary, as the uh, people in Kenya and developing regions who barely have access to banks and uh, and do their transactions through uh, online means such as uh, technological innovations and Pesa, which is over eight million subscribers in Kenya itself. Now, uh, the uh, a speaker of side proposition came up and said, "Why don't you invest something that is not cryptocurrency, some other technology that will give you more jobs?" Now, uh, does he he realize how stupid this uh, notion actually stands? Cryptocurrency is something that is a vast number of benefits and uh, very useful as a as a currency, and therefore, innovation uh, in the phase of cryptocurrency is what people are uh, it's needed right now. Someone also came up and spoke about how jobs will be lost as banks will go out of business. Now, when as with any technological advance, with any technological advance, jobs are always created as as all jobs are lost. Therefore, no really jobs will be lost, and there will not be any vast unemployment. Secondly, people uh, side uh, opposition continuously brought up that in a Bitcoin-driven economy, it will be highly unstable. There would be a lot of money laundering. But what side opposition suggests today is not a Bitcoin-driven economy. It is what exists today. Bitcoin and fiat currencies existing side by side, and side opposition fail. Side opposition fails to realize that what they their burden today to prove is that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency should be banned, which I feel they have highly, which they have highly failed to prove. And here I would like to rest my case, but not my stance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shreyas. Now we'll be looking for questions. The first question recognized will be from Devarko Datta. You may proceed. So, in your uh, so in your speech, that you told that the nature of cryptocurrency is risky, and so in the later part, you mentioned that we are not talking about a cryptocurrency-driven economy. But sir, do you realize? So, so, but why do you think that there should be even a scope for huge money losses? Because cryptocurrency, even if the econ whole economy is not driven by cryptocurrency, at the end of the day, it provides a scope for huge money losses. So, so why would we uh, provide the scope? Why should we not ban that scope? Uh, so, you are talking about that cryptocurrencies provide you uh, scope for huge losses. Well, why don't you go ahead and ban the stock market? You usually ban things that has the risk of losing jobs. Uh, you can even ban people from setting up businesses. People are spending money on that business. People are investing time in that business. How will that business stop? The person loses lots of money. This is bad. Everything, everything that can actually lead to profits for a person. So, is that what you're suggesting today? Thank you for the answer. We will be recognizing one more question from Nikhilesh Mukherjee. Nikhilesh, you may proceed. So you said volatility is a inherent is a basic uh, feature Nikhilesh, of investment. Hold on, hold. I think Shreyas has disconnected. No, I think he's back. Shreyas, yeah. are you with us now? Uh, yes, I think I got disconnected for a while. Now. Yes, that's fine. Nikhilesh, you may continue. Sir, I hope the book you were holding right now was a dictionary because. Edible. 
ट so the uh, so that is what uh, cryptocurrencies today cryptocurrencies today shows that that is a feature that, that is a feature of any sort of investment or any sort of currency which can lose its value in in a, f- a number of days if you look at the zimbabwe economic crisis where their currency literally became worthless in a in a in a few days now that it can also happen with fiat currencies that is a feature inherent feature that is present in all sorts of currencies and uh, for example you can even look at crises in europe after world war 2 or even the great depression all right thank you shriyash i think we are over with today's debate session all of you have spoken so it was really a great debating session really informative and thought provoking now what i w- witnessed today is that and observed is that each of you spoke with great confidence and moreover the arguments that each one of you came up with really reflected the immense research that you had done on today's topic namely cryptocurrency so i'm pretty sure that all those watching this video by now are themselves confident to share openly share their views on today's topic and since today was just a friendly debate we do not have any winning side however those witnessing or those may be watching this video on youtube or our instagram page may feel free to comment and express any opinion that you may have that being said shivam if you have anything to share just jump in so sure, thank you zoo i completely agree with you on the aspect of confidence assuming that i would be as young as you i would not have had this much of confidence coming up to such a platform and speaking and the research was also very well done all aspects were touched and very well explained as well and i think that does deserve a like if anyone is watching us on youtube so overall i'm pretty happy with the turnout today and the quality of the debate